Hello and welcome to Curious Austrian Tours. The 1916 Easter Rising. Along with the Acts of Union in 1800, which was approved in 1801, Ireland, which had been under some form of English control since the 12th century, merged with Great Britain to form the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. Consequently, Ireland lost its Parliament in Dublin and was governed by a united Parliament from Westminster in London. During the 19th century, factions of Irish nationalists opposed this arrangement in varying degrees. Some nationalists were supporting the idea of home rule, under which Ireland would remain part of the United Kingdom but also have some structure of self government. Numerous home rule bills were defeated in Parliament in the late 1800s before one finally passed in 1914. Still, implementation of home rule was halted due to the outbreak of World War I, 1914 till 1918. In the meantime, members of a secret revolutionary organization called the Irish Republican Brotherhood, short IRB, who thought Home Rule wouldn't go far enough and instead wanted complete independence for Ireland, started planning what would later become the Easter Rising. They expected their rebellion would be supported by the German military, which was battling the British in World War I. Roger Casement, an Irish nationalist who later became the leader of the Easter Rising, organized distribution of German arms and ammunition to the rebels via ship. Nevertheless, just before the rebellion began, the British detected the ship and it was consequently wrecked. On that fateful day, on Easter Monday 1916, a group of Irish nationalists declared the establishment of the Irish Republic and, along with some 1,600 supporters, staged a revolt against the British government in Ireland. The insurrection was planned by Patrick Pearce, Tom Clark and several other leaders of the Irish Republican Brotherhood, which was a radical society within a nationalist organization called the Irish Volunteers. The latter had about 16,000 members and was equipped with German weapons smuggled into the country in 1914. These two organizations were accompanied by the Irish Citizen Army, an association of Dublin workers formed after the failure of the general strike of 1913 and by the small Sinn Féin party. The rebellion was intended to be nationwide in scale, but a series of mishaps led to it being restricted to Dublin alone. The British had learned of the planned rebellion and on April 21st arrested Irish nationalist Sir Roger Casement in County Kerry for running arms for the rebels. Ian McNeil, the leader of the Irish Volunteers, thus revoked deployment orders for the insurgents, but Pierce and Clark went ahead with about 1,560 Irish Volunteers and the 200-man delegation of the Citizen Army. On April 24th, the forces took over the Dublin General Post Office and other strategic points in Dublin's city centre, and Pierce read out a proclamation declaring Ireland as an independent republic as well as stating that the provisional government comprised of IRB members had already been appointed. British troops soon arrived to put down the rebellion and for nearly a week Dublin was mainly dominated by fighting and violence in the streets. The British government soon declared martial law in Ireland and British artillery bombardments forced Pierce and his associates to surrender on April 29th. Some 450 people were killed and more than 2,000 others, many of them civilians, were wounded in the violence which also destroyed much of the Dublin city centre. The leaders of the rebellion soon were executed. At first, there was little support from the Irish people for the Easter Rising or rebellion. However, in May, it is thought that among Casement himself, who was charged with treason, 50 leaders of the uprising were executed by firing squad. More than 3,000 people alleged of supporting the uprising, directly or indirectly, were arrested and some 1,800 were sent to England and incarcerated there without trial. The swift executions, mass detentions and martial law, which remained in effect through the autumn of 1916, fueled public resentment toward the British and were among the factors that helped build support for the rebels and the movement for Irish independence. 
Nevertheless, public opinion soon shifted and the executed leaders were hailed as martyrs. In 1921, a treaty was signed which in 1922 established the Irish Free State which eventually became the modern day Republic of Ireland. In 1918, general election to the Parliament of the United Kingdom, the Sinn Féin political party, whose goal was to establish a republic, won a majority of the Irish seats. Its members then refused to sit in the UK Parliament in London and in January 1919 met in Dublin to assemble a single chamber parliament as well as declare Ireland's independence. The Irish Republican Army then initiated a guerrilla war against the British government and its forces in Ireland. In the wake of a July 1921 ceasefire, the two sides signed a treaty in December which called for the establishment of the Irish Free State, a self-governing nation of the British Commonwealth the following year. Ireland's six northern counties withdrew from the Free State and remained within the United Kingdom. The fully independent Republic of Ireland, consisting of the 26 counties in the southern and western part of the island, was formally declared on Easter Monday, April 18, 1949. The 1916 Rising was the first major revolt against British rule in Ireland since the United Irishman Rebellion of 1798. Though some see it as an unmandated bloody act by unrepresentative secret conspirators, for many it was the founding act of a democratic Irish state and, ultimately, the formal declaration of an Irish Republic in 1949. Alright, that's it for today. I appreciate you watching this video. Do not forget to subscribe and like and spread the spirit of curious Austrian tours. Cheerio!